my lovelies. Good afternoon from me and this lady's butt. <laughs> Lads, it is early Saturday afternoon and it has been a rough week. <laughs> but today we have a few little kind of exciting bits and pieces going on and I wanted to take you guys along with me for that in case you two have had a less than ideal week and you fancy doing something through the medium of however you're watching this. <laughs> to cheer us up from our not so great week, we have a couple of little kind of cute, wholesome things going on today. One of which is the opening event of my city's first ever bubble tea place. So we are going to go down to their opening event today, which is all kind of gifted, invited, which I need to disclose for legal reasons. But we are going to go get ourselves some fresh air and some exercise and some bubble tea. Let's go. I now truly understand why this is as popular and hyped up as it is. <laughs> and plus the whole thing is just really wholesome and cute and the menu is actually pretty kind of wide ranging and inclusive, especially for a sort of um, chain place. The tea is amazing. I actually got the reduced sugar, like the 50% sugar mango tea with um some rainbow bubbles because you can choose your kind of ice level you can choose your sweetness level which is great because you know even though you guys know that i inhale chocolate and cake i actually i'm not a huge fan of sweet drinks because i just find them way too much when i eat a lot of sugar elsewhere in my diet but this is still really full of flavor and full of that nice kind of sweetness without it being too like but <laughs> they even gave me some little gifts to go away with which i think are just adorable <laughs> so they were handing out lots of vouchers and things today they had this spinning wheel thing that you could spin if you wanted to win either free drinks or 30 percent off they gave me some <laughs> some bubble tea socks which are just hilariously cute and they gave me some little reusable metal straws and a little cleaner too. So there's some kind of skinny ones just for normal drinks and one that you can actually fit your bubble tea bubbles or any sort of thicker drink through, which I just think is a great idea. Really, really generous of them. So thankfully, while it's not as super obvious as it was earlier this week, one of the reasons that the past few days have not been ideal is I've been having some <laughs> wisdom tooth drama. But basically, I was in a stupid amount of pain on Monday, like I couldn't sleep the amount of pain I was in. And on Tuesday morning, <laughs> I'll put up a picture just for your entertainment, but on Tuesday morning, I woke up looking like a squirrel that was getting ready for hibernation a hamster that had found all of the available local hamster food. <laughs> I've been on liquid food, soft food, and no alcohol this week. <laughs> so it has been wrecking my mood a little bit, but um, some homemade tomato soup is a <laughs> depressing short-term solution for that. And I've also been gifted something very, very nice this weekend, which is also helping to cheer me up and may also be the basis of a little recipe today. Are you ready for it? Are you ready for it? I hope you're ready for it. The glorious, glorious team at Pip and Nut have sent me an astonishingly generous gift that has, honestly, when I, <laughs> when I received this yesterday, I wanted to cry because it's just so, so nice being able to, you know, being lucky enough to receive things like this. And not only that, it comes with the full backstory it comes with stickers, it comes with thank yous. I just, oh, it's amazing. If you're not aware of Pippin Nut, they are a UK-based nut butter company and they have just released, kind of re-released all of their products in glass 
fully recyclable packaging. Previously, it had been in recyclable plastic, but they've made the switch to this really classy, sexy looking glass packaging instead. And they have been so generous and so kind, just as a kind of thank you because I've worked with them in the past. I've done kind of recipes featuring their nut butters in the past. And this is just kind of a little thank you from them from which I am returning the thank you. <laughs> so as you can probably see in here, we have their smooth classic almond butter, their limited edition, but extremely, extremely good dark chocolate and sea salt almond butter and their coconut almond butter. And honestly, these two, classy drugs. <laughs> We also have a few kinds of their peanut butter in here. We have their classic smooth peanut butter. We have a kind of sweetened maple peanut butter and this, which is their most recent release. This is their ultimate peanut butter, which is like a sort of dark roast. So if you really like an almost savory peanut flavor to your peanut butter, this is your gal. And I am just feeling a little bit inspired by both my own selfish need and in celebration of this lovely package to make a bit of a chocolate peanut butter cake. What do we think? I did it, but while we wait for the chocolate cake to be cool enough to put that peanut butter frosting on, I'm gonna go and finally record this month's episode of the Sweet Nothings podcast because my wisdom tooth has not allowed it thus far. So we're gonna do it right now. And here's what that looks like in practice. <laughs> Folks, we are done untitled, unedited, pure. That's my job for this evening. <laughs> I even had to set up my own personal sun in the form of an Ikea lamp because the actual lamp I have in here is now just for decoration because it's broken. The glamorous, the glamorous life of podcasting on a budget. <laughs> anyway, shall we have some cake? Let's talk about frosting. This is just a nice, simple peanut butter frosting made with butter, icing sugar, and your favorite peanut butter. In this case, obviously, we were using the Pip and Nut Smooth Peanut Butter, their kind of classic one, but any kind you like. Typically, the more natural it is, the better the peanut butter will react with the butter. Sometimes if there's palm oil added or anything like that, it can sometimes make the butter split a little bit, which isn't the end of the world. It just doesn't create the smoothest, kind of fluffiest result. So all of that just kind of whipped together. As you can see, we now have a nice texture to that there with my little whisk. Of course, if you have an electric whisk or if you have a food mixer, I do not. Mine decided to break on me. That will make a kind of smoother, super, super fluffy result, but you can do just fine by hand. Now, I haven't made a huge amount because this cake is just for me. I am not a huge kind of frosting gal. I don't love it all over the place. I don't love a, a completely covered cake all the time. I think it covers the beauty of the layers you have inside the cake. And I think it just kind of overwhelms and makes everything a bit too rich and sickly anyway. So this is just going to be the kind of chocolate cake that has frosting in the middle and on top. Real rustic, grandma's kitchen style. Let's go. I got fancy and threw some chocolate on top too. <laughs> but this is exactly, exactly what I was craving. Nothing fancy, nothing particular, just a good straight up old fashioned cake. Two layers, cake, icing, some stuff on top and two of my favorite flavors in the world. If you wanted to, you could kind of cut both of these to make a four layer cake. Or oh, of course you could use 
You could kind of double up on the frosting and make a fully kind of coated cake if you want to. This is just my particular preference because this one's just for me and just for Francesco when he gets home from his long shift today. Oh, whoops. Would you look at that? So just a kind of little slice because I'll probably have more later. But here we have our cake. As you can see, lovely, soft, fluffy chocolate cake and a nice generous, generous blob of that lush peanut butter crusting on top. Happy Saturday. Mm. Rich, sweet, salty, fluffy. Mm. A very happy Saturday indeed. Mm.